Hello, 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 and welcome back to my channel where today I am doing something different. Are you even a YouTuber if you have not started out a video by saying that you are doing something different? I have a new computer and I needed to test out my recording setup and I didn't want to do anything that was too crazy high pressure. So I wanted to do a cast video that I had in mind. This is basically how to make better looking Sims in cast. Now I will say that better is subjective, that you know my definition of better and other people's definitions of better are going to be completely different. This is just the way I like to make Sims. I do use Alpha C and I trend towards doing highly realistic sims. However, a lot of the tips that I give in this could be beneficial to pretty much any type of uh, sims that you might happen to make. So stick around, maybe you'll learn something. And if you have any ideas, anything that I didn't cover in this, uh, make sure you comment them down below so uh, people that watch the video can learn from you as well. So I hope this is all recording properly. I have, this is the first, I've done a couple of recording tests. I have not done a tremendous amount. I have set up this sim here. I just wanted a general framework. So I used the story mode. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll have it put together my little story for my sim and then I will write a like a backstory and get a kind of a vibe for who they are based on what their traits and their skills are. So her career is entertainer. She is cheerful, self-assured and self-absorbed. Interesting. Skills, acting, mischief and starting friends. So what I generally start off first with is skin details. Let me be honest, you don't need custom content to make good looking sims, but it's definitely a lot easier to make good looking sims with uh, custom content. And I would say that the more custom content that you have and the higher quality of that custom content, the better your sims will turn out as a whole. For me, since I tend to do really high realism stuff, my favorite skins are by uh, This Is Them, by Obscurus, uh, Sims 3 Melancholic, Blobberry Pancake does some. And I think for the sim, I really like this Deborah skin a lot. It's very realistic. Got, got a nice bit of face shine on it. It gives you a nice lip detail on it as well. And I think that's pretty good. Is that close to her skin tone? Um, she's quite a bit tanner than that. So let's go for a little bit tanner. Next up for me, what I do is eyes. I have probably hundreds hundreds, hundreds of eyes installed on, um, you know what, for most of my Sims, I use one. I don't know how to pronounce their name. Uh, Gopals, Gopals, uh, Gopals me. They do a lot of Asian and K-pop inspired custom content. I like their stuff a lot. Um, and the, the ones that I like the most by that are the G11s. And of course they're not in order. I like this little bit of water, I guess, underneath the eye a lot. Uh, and she had green eyes. Although with her, I am, concerned because the way her eye shape is, there's a lot of space under that eye. So I may need to go with an eye other than my trusty standby. Um, Alf-SI makes really good realistic stuff as well. Oh, those are very realistic. I like those eyes a lot. Now let me try a couple others. A lot of these eyes are having a lot of space under them and I'm not super happy with that. Oh, actually these Angusy eyes are kind of nice. And skin detail eyes are always going to look better than the eyes that are actual eyes. Unfortunately, they don't inherit. They're not considered like a genetic trait. Um, they are considered a makeup. When you have custom content eyes, it's actually putting the eye, the eyeball on top of a ball shaped thing on the sim. And that seems to uh, corrupt the way the eyes look. I'm not making a lot of sense. <laughs> the eyes do not look as good when they uh, have to be put on that eyeball model. I think I like these. Now, in addition to just stock custom content, I do have texture replacements and lighting replacements as well. If you guys want me to go over things like that and things like HQ mod in a future video, let me know. I've considered making a video on it, but I have never thought anyone would be interested in it, so I haven't. I think I like these eyes the best because they're fairly realistic. They're also very close to my natural eye color, so I like them a lot. So generally from here, where I go is hair, and I have a ton of hair. Now, if you're just starting out with custom content, especially alpha custom content, you need to know that the hairs are probably going to be the biggest files, and they're going to slow down your computer the most. So if you have an older computer, especially, you're gonna wanna make sure that you are not downloading just a ton of hairs that you're not going to use. If you have a fairly robust computer, you can definitely download a ton of CC and you'll be fine. But I know that there are a lot of simmers that do have older computers or they might be playing from their laptop at times. And the hairs are going to be the things that impact your system performance the absolute most. I think I'm going to do, I like this hair a lot. I just wonder 
She kind of has a small forehead. I think I like that hair. Next thing, what I'm gonna do is go into tattoos and I'm probably gonna have to censor this because it's going to take her clothing off. And I do have one of the replacements that I have is a body mod replacement uh, and they are anatomically correct. Um, so one thing that I see a lot of simmers not do is when they make a sim, they don't use all of the slots. And if you think about people, people tend to have a lot of variation in their freckles and their skin tone and things like that. And when you're, I, I use the slots in the character generator as kind of a, like just extra quirks, like real human beings have. Um, and one of the things I see a lot of people forget is the hairline. And the hairline is going to help the... This this hair isn't too bad, but a lot of hairs do not necessarily match in the most natural fashion at The Sims' forehead. So if you look her hairline, it kind of just blurs weirdly into her skin a little bit. And if you add a bit of a hairline, it adds a little bit of a darker root that makes the hair look more natural. It looks less like a wig. It looks more like it's growing out of the character's head. And I, I don't see a lot of people use hairlines on characters and it's one of the things that I feel really helps to up the realism level. So I'm using a very hyper detailed skin. I'm using a fairly realistic skin but in terms of face details a lot of people just will just slap a skin on there and be good to go but you know you have a lot of situations like where you could or you have a lot of things like eye bags that you can add to a character and make them make it look like a little bit older. You can do mouth corners to make their uh, expression, to make it look a little bit more smiley. You can change your nose shape that way. That's a really good way because a lot of characters just have very undefined noses. So a lot of times I'll use nose masks for those characters. If you're using hyper-realistic skins, it's not as necessary because you already have a little bit of under eye. You have uh, nose definition and stuff like that. But those are good things to keep in mind, especially things like face shine. Um, she's got a decent bit of face shine, but there's a lot of skins that look quite flat. Uh, let me actually change her skin details out for a second. So if you look on this on this skin, there is not as much lightness around the forehead, the under eyes, on the nose, and things like that. And for a skin like this, I would probably use a face shine mask in order to give her a little bit more of the natural kind of human brightness to her face and to emphasize, uh, you know, the straightness of the nose and such. So if you look that makes a small but it makes a small difference but it makes it adds some roundness to the chin it adds some definition here it adds definition under the eyes and things like that all add together to make a sim that is far more realistic i also like these right here they're the little um, face shine as well. And obviously you can add some wrinkles and stuff. And all those things are just going to add together to add more character to your character. And this is an example of a nose mask. Now, the better ones like this one actually have a bunch of different colors and you just match it to the closest tone of your Sims skin tone and that'll reshape their nose a fair bit. I mean, that just completely reshapes the tip. And that's a really good way to avoid having a sim that looks like all of the other sims. So I'm gonna take those off for now and put her back to that original skin because I think that looked super cute on her. When I say use all the slots, I also mean makeup slots as well. I put makeup on all of my sims, including my male sims. I use almost every, almost every slot for the male sims as well. I like to use for lips, they have lips that just um, obscurus is really good with them where they just are natural lip skin tones and they just make it look a little bit uh they make the, the lip wrinkles look a little bit different these will fit a male character as well these uh ones by gopals alf si has ones as well that are all kind of uh natural lip colors that allow you to just again make your character look a little bit different and a little bit more realistic i think i think for her i'm going to use these obscurus lips this little they're a very natural hue but then there's just a little hint of gold down the middle and i just think it's the classiest thing ever for cheeks if I couldn't do a skin detail highlight, I will do it here. I, I think face highlight is probably the most important thing. This face shine that adds definition and dimension to the face is probably the most important thing to making your character more realistic. So if you can't do that with a skin detail, I do that with a blush. So I have a lot of highlighter blushes and highlighter blush combos. Um, I really like, I, my big thing right now is pink noses. I didn't used to like them because I do have rosacea myself and I do everything in my power to keep my face from being red. But I have to admit that Sims look more realistic when you when they have a little bit of red on their face. Um, even male Sims, you know, people have blood. 
that's just how people do. And this Elf SI highlighter is probably one of my favorites because you can do a super blinding popping highlight and that just it goes to emphasize like from this angle you can see like the shape of her nose this is why i love highlighter this is why i wish i knew how to do highlighter in real life but i don't so i just do it on all of my sims i think for her i'm going to do i have this blush combo that has freckles that i enjoy a lot i like freckles because most people have natural blemishes on their skin that's just how skin is Eyeliners, I have um, some fairly subtle, um, Gopals does a lot of subtle eyeliners that I use for male characters that just add a little bit of eyelashes and a little bit of eyeliner. If you guys want me to see, uh, want to see me do a video where I make a male sim, let me know, I'd be, I would be happy to, uh, because I think that a lot of people don't know how to, don't know how to put makeup on male sims without, you know, doing a James Charles type sim. Um, they don't know how to make a character have a natural look using makeup. So if anybody's interested in that, I would be happy to do it. Eyeshadow. This is where eyeshadow can be really interesting. Um, so I do a lot of Asian characters, Asian male characters, and it's hard to find skin details that do, that have a mono lid. So in addition to just having eyeshadow, there are actually eyelids. It will change up the shape of the character's eyelid. Just like the nose masks, you match it to the color of the character's skin and it changes the shape of that eye area. Um, let me see if I can find the one that's for mono lids because that's actually a pretty significant, there it is. So if I had an Asian character and I wanted to do a mono lid, this will take away the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 what do you call an eyelid that's not a mono lid? The bi lid? I guess I should, <laughs> bi lid eyelid? I, I don't know. And that's what I do on uh, a lot of my male, like, K-pop uh, stars. She uh, is not going to have a monolid. So a lot of times, if I'm just trying to do a no-makeup look, I'll just do, like, a light brown kind of almost smoky eye just to make the eye pop a little bit more. That's a little bit more than I was going for. <laughs> yes, this is how I do subtle makeup. Immediately puts on not subtle makeup. If you're somebody who likes to do story let's plays, there's a lot of makeup available that you can use to do things like black eyes and bloody noses and stuff like that. So I tend to keep a lot of that stuff around too. I haven't had a chance to use it in a story yet though. So I'm gonna have to find a reason to do that. You know, I said that I was gonna do a subtle look on her, but I'm just, her eyes are just begging me to do something that's not subtle. Uh, I might do something not subtle. <laughs> this is how it's creating Sims goes for me. The problem I have is that she's so cute and everything looks good on her and I can't stop. For eyelashes, even though she does have eyelashes already, since I went with a bolder lip look, I am going to do some of the Kajiko eyelashes. They are amazing. I also love these ones by MM Sims for a little bit less of a glam look because uh, the Kajiko ones are a little bit, they're, they're, woo. I, <laughs> that was weird. I am still gonna go with somewhat subtle uh, lashes because I don't wanna go too crazy. I've held off on doing her eyebrows uh, because eyebrows is one of the things that takes me the longest on Sims. I can never decide what looks good, probably because I don't have eye eyebrows on my own. What I will say is that um, I try not to match the eyebrows exactly to the hair color. I, I pretty much try to go, so her hair color is fairly light. So I think what I would probably do is either a dark ash blonde to match her, like her root or um, something like that. Maybe a light brown. I found that some people go, when you go super light with the brow, it kind of looks weird. I also don't like going super dark or super red. I'm a person of the ginger persuasion and my eyebrows are still fairly brunette-ish. I like the shape. I don't like, I'm, I'm weird. I don't like the, like the, the in style eyebrows right now. I kind of like a subtle eyebrow. It's probably because I don't have eyebrows. So one piece of custom content that a lot of people don't know about are things like presets and sliders. So the game by default has a lot of sliders that allow you to adjust like your characters, how uh, thick their thighs are. It does not have one for height. 
So a lot of times I, one of the first things I do is download a height slider. There also are finite limits to the sizes and shapes that you can do with the like in-game, I mean the in-game body shapes are fairly limited. So I tend to have a lot of these uh, body uh, presets in to kind of give my characters a bit of extra shape. The good thing about this is that I have them all turned on for random so it makes the sims in my game that the game randomly generates have a lot more diversity in their body shapes as well. It allows me to have bigger butts, bigger boobs. The one thing that I will say, especially with alpha custom content, is the characters that do have big butts, big boobs, it can be hard to get the hair. Like if you can, if you look at her boobs, they're not even that big and the hair is already clipping and you can see the button is kind of getting weird, weirdly shapen. So that is the one downside to unfortunately making a character that has realistic human proportions. You're gonna have, you're gonna have some difficulty with clothing. I think we're gonna go with this body shape. Um, and then I have the height changer as well, which I really like. The one downside of the height slider is that it does kind of put your character out of frame when you're trying to do their face. So you wanna make sure you do that last. So in terms of clothing, I am really particular about the clothing that my Sims wear. In real life, things are not perfectly flat. You don't have, um, let me find an example. And I'm, and I'm not trying to bash any CC. This is just my preference versus, you know, what some pieces of CC look like. This is perfectly flat against the character's body. Um, and because of that, it doesn't look very realistic. So a lot of times I try to find things that are raised away from the character's body. Um, if you look, there is actually a gap between the character and the strap there. And in addition, there is also texture on the pattern of the shirt, which gives it additional realism as well. I really like clothing that has like a, uh, a knit or textured surface a lot. Although what you can see that the problem that I was mentioning earlier where you have a character with slightly larger boobs and the uh, outfits can get dist uh, distorted. I really love this shirt. I think this is a great like business lady going to work shirt, but it's not quite the vibe I'm going for. One thing that does frustrate me about custom content is that you do occasionally see custom content that's advertised and all of the models are like stick skinny and it's like, okay, is that custom content going to look great on a character that is not built like a toothpick or is that a limitation? <laughs> I really love this shirt for a lot of reasons. It's got a little, it's got that nice cutout and you can see that it is, it is a uh, raised texture. It's a unique shape. And I like that it's got this little cutout. And one of the things that I really like to do with my characters is layer their clothing. I don't know when I decided that she was gonna be a rocker girl, but this is happening now. So I have a lot of accessories that can be layered like body suits and things like that. I really like layering them underneath because it just adds extra depth and dimension and interest. And it's the way that I would like to dress if I could just own infinite clothing. I have a bunch of these cute play suits that have patterns on them. Like I really like these lacy ones. Ooh, or the flowers. I don't think I'm gonna do anything under her shirt though because I do the same thing for pants a lot. I really like to have either skirts or pants that have holes in them and then wear uh, tights underneath that have a cute design. I think that looks really neat and it helps differentiate your Sims from other people's Sims. So I tend to have a lot of pants that have um, big gaping holes in them. So I can go into the accessories and leggings and I have a ton of different leggings that can go underneath and add just an infinite array of different clothing. Kind of like that subtle flower pattern underneath. And I have a link below in my bio to my wiki. And on that wiki, I have uh, link links to custom content creators that I enjoy a lot. So if you're curious what custom content I like the most, that is a good resource. Oh my God, I really love these uh, Balmain for Sims shoes. Actually, everything they make recently has been super great. So in times, there are times when I have something that I want to use for some reason, but it is flush up against the skin. And this is when layering can come into play again. So let's just say that there's something particular about this, this top that I really, say I really need to make a sim with a pink top. So I have a jacket over top of it to make it look more visually interesting or I could do a necklace that try that hits around this part of the neck to try and distract from the fact that the neckline is so flat. Yeah, I can use these little guys underneath as well to make it more interesting looking. I have this interesting off shoulder jacket. So you do something like this and then a, <laughs> you know, 
Okay, put your sims height down until you're ready and then I go and do it myself. I like these layered necklaces a lot because they can distract from a flat neckline. For male sims, you can do a, you can do like a scarf or something like that. I really like scarfs and neckties. So scarfs can work too. That's a pattern you want. And go put her shirt back on. For pretty much every skin, the fingernails look super weird. So I almost always use custom content fingernails, even for my male sims, even if it's just to put like a little bit of skin tone on their hands. The ones on this skin aren't awful, but I find that it helps a lot. And arms on sims just for some reason look weirdly bare to me. So I find that sims just don't look right if they don't have something on their arms and hands. So I, I weirdly, I'm not into bracelets and stuff uh, and rings in real life or watches, but for my Sims, I pretty much have all of them have some sort of like watch combo situation and a ring and some fingernails on. Maybe I just, my, my Sims are the perfect people that I can't be. I really like long nails on my Sims too because I can't do long nails. And I mean, she wants to be an actress, so she's gotta be that, that glam, glam look. Oh, did that take off her? Tights, what took off her tights? Oh, those are better tights anyway. So this is my Sim, she is Natalie Sloan. And let me teach you something else about a mod that I have that I really like. This is a problem that I have. So I will make a Sim and I use makeup. I use, I fill up all of my slots for all of my Sims. And that's really annoying to have to put on all of my outfits. There is a creator called Lord Voldemort and he has, or he, she has a, add-on called copy outfit that you can use to copy part or the entirety of one outfit to all of the outfit slots for a character. So the way I have it configured is to only copy things like accessories. It won't copy the main clothing items, but that has been completely invaluable to my play style. So if you have the add-on installed, all you need to do is hit control shift C, hit testing cheats on and then type have with the character selected. So if you look, I'll show you right now. So right now, if we look at her other outfits, uh, you'll see custom content that is broken. <laughs> Hold on. Right now, if you look at her other outfits, you'll see that she's got some wild and crazy custom content. But if you copy outfit, it will copy all of her. It, it's copied all of the accessories from her everyday look into her other looks. She looks super thrilled with her day. So I think that's all that I have for you guys today. If you'd like to see videos about HQ mod, about how I manage my CC, or about me doing the same kind of a thing video with a male sim, please let me know down in the comments below. If you have any tips for other ple people, please leave them in the comments below as well. Sorry if this felt a little bit awkward. I've I don't normally try to talk a lot while I'm doing a character in cast, so uh, it was a bit weird for me, um, but I hope it was enjoyable for you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.